Chapter 1. What is the devil's contract? Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. The devil's contract is a supernatural contract that is formed between a human and the devil. Now we know the devil cannot be everywhere at once, so he has his demons do most of the work. The devil's kingdom is set up strategically with ranks of demons that do different jobs. The contract that you have made with the devil was actually formed between you and demons. When I use the word devil, enemy, evil, or demons, I am referring to the kingdom of Satan. Every action an evil force takes was a direct order from their hierarchy, which is Satan. They feed you their doctrine and lies to deceive you into believing them and signing the contract. The contract is made up over time and continually added to almost daily. The devil's contract contains the doctrine of demons spoken about in the Bible. The contract you sign with demons is just as real as if you signed it with Satan because he is the one to whom the contract is submitted. When you saw the title of this book, it's very possible that you thought about someone selling their soul to the devil. It's been referred to as making a deal with the devil for something that you want more than anything in the world. The devil's contract is quite the opposite, as you will find out throughout this book. You are making a deal, but it doesn't work out the way that you think it will. There are demonic spirits that will deceive you into thinking that you're getting one over on the devil and God. They want you to think that you're in control. You wind up being a slave to them and their desires. This turns into the worst episode of the Twilight Zone that you can imagine because it has eternal consequences. The devil is in the details, and he's very technical about those details in the contract. A judge does not need to come in person to make you submit to the court. He will simply send an enforcer or officer to make you submit to the power of the court. You submit to the devil's power when you sign this contract with demons. They try to hide this fact from you so that you will sign it and be loyal. The devil's contract is formed by agreeing to any lie contrary to God's word. You can have a contract that is only composed of a few lies or a whole bunch of lies. The devil's contract has a wide array of areas where these lies are applied to your life. The devil's contract is only one contract, but it's compiled of all the lies he has convinced you to believe. When breaking the devil's contract, it's important to do it in one area or lie at a time. So when I refer to the contract of fear, it's just a part of the devil's contract. The devil's contract is made up of many different smaller contracts or agreements. All of these smaller contracts are compiled to make the devil's contract. The devil's contract is brutal and cruel, but it can be broken with God's power. The devil's contract is a significant contract that binds you to a demonic doctrine. This book shows you how the contract or deal is made with the devil. This contract is an agreement by both parties. The devil is in the details, and they are critical, but unfortunately they are hidden in the fine print. So I'm sure you're curious what's in the contract. You might also be wondering how long you are locked in for on the contract. How many parts does it have? What are the hidden terms? We'll get to all these questions, but let's look right now at the contents of the contract. See, a contract is a written or spoken agreement by both parties that is enforceable. The contract has an exchange of value, which makes you wonder what is valuable about it for you. The type of contract that the devil makes with us is called an unconscionable contract. An unconscionable contract is considered unjust by being unfairly weighted to give the advantage to one side over the other. A court usually rules and determines if a contract is unconscionable. If the court was to rule a contract to be unconscionable, it would have to be defined that no mentally able person would sign it. The second part would be that no honest person would offer it as an option. The third part would be to find that the integrity of the court is in question if enforced. Some synonyms of a contract are agreement, covenant, pact, deal, 
bond, account, engagement, pledge, or promise. There are several parts to a contract. There has to be an offer, acceptance of the agreement, a meeting of the minds, consideration, capacity, legality, and sometimes a written document to be valid. In understanding the type of contract, you can see that what I'm talking about here is a contract that should be illegal. However, this contract is binding along with any other contracts as long as you verbally agree to it or give consent. However, if you try to fight it, bring it to the courts, and expose the language in the contract, then it will be deemed null and void by the judge. The problem is that most people cannot afford an attorney, and they do not know how to fight it themselves. The other person enforcing the contract makes them pay dearly with all they have. We must follow biblical doctrine and let it guide us every day. Biblical doctrine is a belief system made up of biblical truth from the scriptures that are used to guide our thoughts and actions. In the Bible, it talks about there being doctrines of demons. The doctrines of demons is an evil doctrine designed to kill, steal, and destroy you. The devil is the author of confusion. He is also the god of this world. The god of this world has a job to blind you from the truth. The Bible is absolute truth. It says that the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. The devil does not want you to know the truth. It's his job to confuse you and make sure that you don't understand the truth. Part of the problem is that we do not realize that the devil is speaking to us normally. We hear three voices daily. The first voice is our flesh. Our voice would tell us that we are hungry, thirsty, or bored. It also will tempt us to do evil things by perverting our desires. The second voice is the voice of God. His voice is the most unmistakable voice to discern. His voice is always trying to tell us to do the right thing. Sometimes his voice will warn us of making a specific decision. His voice will not be contrary to the word of God. The third voice is the voice of the enemy, which tries to deceive us all the time. He tells us lies and tries to confuse us. He is very selfish and evil. He wants to create division in our lives between people we love. He tempts us to sin continually. All these voices show up in our heads as thoughts. So that means all day long. You're at least listening to three different voices. Other people's voices can also be speaking to you. But this is still their flesh, God, or the devil speaking to you through them. The Bible tells us to take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Starting today, you must listen to every voice that comes into your head. When you listen to these voices, you need to decide which voice is speaking to you. If it's the voice of God, then you need to obey it. If it's the voice of the enemy, then you need to rebuke it. Tell it no and to get out of your head. The problem is that the enemy speaks to us all day long, and we don't rebuke him or tell him no. These thoughts, which are his ideas and plans, wind up nesting in our mind. We begin to dwell on these thoughts and accept them as our new reality, which is giving consent to the devil and forming a contract. If it's your flesh, then we need to refuse it because it wants to do evil. Now, sometimes our thoughts can be demonic. Our thoughts can be evil. Our flesh is corrupt and it's continually active. Our flesh wants to try to kill us. Now, what I mean by that is if you're at McDonald's and you have the option of anything on the menu or a salad, then you're probably going to pick the unhealthy option. Our flesh in the Bible is described as a mindset that can be temporarily trained. Our flesh will never be saved, but only our spirit can be saved. Our flesh can be trained to do good things in certain areas, but ultimately, it's trying to keep us from God and is drawn towards sin. Our flesh, or our sinful nature, needs to be sanctified daily. That means that we're at war with the flesh every day. We're at war with our flesh and the enemy, which are demons. However, we can fight the enemy with the Spirit of God that is inside of us. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us once we're saved and will give us victory over the flesh. 
However, just like in a real war, if the soldier has a weapon in his hands, it's up to the soldier to use it to defend himself to win over the enemy. If the soldier lays down his weapon and becomes a pacifist, then the enemy will gladly accept that surrender, put them in jail for the rest of their life, and torture them the whole time with intimidation. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to fight the good fight of faith against the enemy and our flesh every day. If we don't fight daily, we will wind up being tempted by our flesh and the enemy, then falling easily into that temptation. If we continue in sin, then we will be far away from God. We will not want to pray, read our Bible, or even go to church. We will lose our desire for the things of God when we sin. It's just like going to the gym. If we go to the gym every day and work out, then we will feel great. However, if we stop going to the gym one day, then we won't want to go to the gym the next day. Before we know it, it's been several days since we've been to the gym, and we don't even miss it. This is our flesh. It wants us to go to the path of least resistance, no matter what. The Bible says that we're to make no provision for the flesh, Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. In the Bible, the flesh is not our human body, but rather it's our sinful nature that lives within us that is evil and is at war against God. As you can see, we have a war on our hands daily, and most of us have not been fighting it. God is speaking to us all day long to do the right thing, avoid the enemy, and be blessed. The enemy is talking, trying to get us to sin. The enemy is not always trying to get us only to sin with our bodies. He wants us to be in rebellion toward God with our minds. Correct doctrinal theology is critical to our everyday lives. Theology is the study of God. Doctrine is the specific belief that applies to our understanding of God and His Word. Satan is continually trying to get us to abandon correct biblical doctrine. One important Christian doctrine is absolute truth. This means that the Word of God is the ultimate biblical authority of truth. Absolute truth cannot be disputed, and it's infallible. If you believe that God's Word is true, then the enemy will always try to change your mind. If you're unsure that God's word is the absolute truth, then he has you already. It's his job to deceive us because he is the God of this world, and he blinds us to the truth. The Bible says that the devil is the author of confusion. Everything the devil says to you is a proposal. Remember that. He is constantly proposing his ideas to you in such a way that he wants to get you to agree with them. You have a choice and the power in Jesus to disagree with him. But when he presents it to you, and you do not disagree, then you are giving him consent. The devil talks to you all day long and reveals to you his ideas. He wants you to follow him and believe his lies. If you believe his doctrine or thoughts, and accept them as your own, you create a contract between you and the devil. You accept his proposal and agree to it. He wants you to believe a lie, and this is spiritual bullying. The devil wants you to believe his doctrine. In doing this, he will supply you with an unconscionable contract. It's unfair to you and robs you of your rights. The Word of God says that Jesus Christ died for our sins, and if we believe that, we'll go to heaven. The devil wants you to believe that Jesus Christ never existed. That means he did not die for your sins, and if you believe that, then you will not go to heaven. Since you have believed in the devil's lies, then you have signed a contract. This contract you signed by agreement is legally binding. This means you agree that the devil is telling you the truth in some area of your life. So in Judgment Day, when you stand before God, you will be amazed at the scars on Jesus' hands. The scars on Jesus' hands will be a witness to you that he was nailed to the cross for your sins. Since you didn't accept Jesus as your Savior, you will be sent to hell for all eternity. It robs you of the benefits of being forgiven of your sins while on earth and going to heaven when you die. Truth in Advertising is an organization dedicated to holding companies accountable for how they advertise to the public. 
The website they have is terrific at informing you of illegal marketing practices in the companies that have used them. They say one deceptive practice is free-to-pay conversion plans, where you receive a good or a service free or at a nominal price for an introductory period. Then you get charged a boatload of money if you don't take affirmative steps to cancel the plan or return the good or service. Unethical advertising is another misinterpretation of the product. It uses subliminal messaging to fit a hidden agenda. This advertising uses deceptive ways to practice and convince the customer to buy a product. Companies have rules and regulations on how they market their products. The company has to tell the truth about the product and they have to follow the FTC rules. The fine print can't be tiny and unreadable, and the side effects must be listed. The speaker on a commercial cannot speak too quickly to where you can't understand them. Commercials are not supposed to be louder than regular programming. I remember many years ago having to turn down the TV as soon as the commercials came on. They were so much louder than the regular programming, it was unbelievable. Companies have accountability, so the customer is not tricked into buying a product and being deceived. In 1958, the National Association of Broadcasters banned subliminal advertising because it was a huge problem. The devil doesn't obey these rules, and neither does his demons. You are the only one who can hold them accountable, but it's only through God's word that they can be found out to be deceptive. If you don't know God's word or obey it, then the demons are running over you and deceiving you into buying their products, which are lies and half-truths. The unconscionable contract definition clearly says that the contract is considered unjust if no mentally able person would sign it. So that means only a crazy person would sign a contract that robs them of being forgiven of their sins and going to hell for all eternity. So it seems only a crazy person would believe the lies of Satan, right? No, we've all been deceived by Satan. A court would look at this contract that you signed and consider it unconscionable, and the contract would be thrown out. However, the only way for this to happen is if you dispute it. Once most people have agreed to something, they will blindly hold on to a lie. Don't let your pride stop you from believing God's word. Yelp is a go-to resource currently for getting reviews on a business. Instead of risking going to a place with bad service or getting a bad deal for your money, most people will do the research and go on Yelp. They will look carefully at the reviews and decide whether they believe that person has given their honest opinion. Then they will determine whether they should go and visit that business. So people do research just for the simple task of getting something to eat for a meal. However, when it comes to hearing voices in your head, People will just silently allow that voice to take over and convince them of some weird thing that's a lie. The enemy will tell you that it's okay to stay home and watch the football game instead of going to church. The enemy will tell you to stay at home and not go to church because it's your only day off. Before you know it, you don't go to church anymore. You look back and it's been over five years since you went to church. How did this happen? The Bible says to take our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. If we don't use God's word as a filter for our thoughts, then we will be gullible and believe any lie the enemy tells us. He loves to tell Christians that church doesn't matter, and it's okay if you don't go to church. God will forgive you. When the enemy tells you these lies, you normally just go with it. The Bible says that we're supposed to fight the good fight of faith. The Christian life is a fight and a daily battle. However, it's not always just a war. If you follow God and have an intimate relationship with Him daily, your life will be filled with unspeakable joy. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is a supernatural gift that the Lord gives. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit occurs as we spend time with the Lord. The fruit of joy will fill our hearts, and it is a supernatural overflow of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Spending time with God and doing His will allows us to experience the joy of the Lord. 
We have to take our thoughts captive, or we will be held captive. Silent consent happens when the devil talks to us about the Bible, sin, or about a Christian doctrine, and we just agree with him out of fear or another reason. The devil is a bully. He wants to threaten us and scare us to believe his truth. We think that if we agree with the devil, he will just leave us alone. This is a massive lie that he wants us to believe. If we agree with the devil, then this gives him a right to oppress us from here on out. We sign a contract that gives him the right to come into our minds permanently. This is like inviting an evil vampire to come into your house. According to most movies, once you do this, they can go inside from now on because you gave them permission once. You may not want them to go in your house every day, but you gave them a key to every lock in your home. You're never safe from the enemy. We do this when we agree with Satan and his doctrine of demons and sign the devil's contract. Demonic doctrine becomes a satanic stronghold in your mind. And the enemy will not give up his access point or key because you gave him a legal right to be there. The enemy builds a fortress in your mind or a demonic stronghold and fights against God. The enemy is continually talking to you. You're probably being talked to right now, and the enemy is trying to distract you from listening to the rest of this chapter or listening to the rest of this book. He knows that you will break the contract you made with him, and he hates that. However, you must choose to be free and break the devil's contract. The most important lie that he can tell anyone is that he doesn't exist or that Jesus is not Lord. If you have believed either one of these lies, then you've signed a contract of unbelief. To break the devil's contract, you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. This book is about exposing the lies of the enemy and giving your life to Jesus. You need the power of God to break the devil's contract and only Jesus has it. Jesus was prophesied as the coming Messiah to forgive people of their sins. He was to be born of a virgin, of the royal lineage of David, sinless, God in the flesh, crucified, and raised from the dead. Jesus accomplished all these things prophesied about him. He lived a sinless life and was crucified on the cross for the sin of all humanity. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is the Son of God. He died for humanity, and salvation is provided as a gift. In the Old Testament, an animal's blood was shed as an offering or atonement for sin. This was a prophecy and foreshadowed what Jesus would do for all of humanity to appease the blood atonement for sin. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. Jesus had dominion over Satan as he walked the earth to the amazement of everyone that saw it at the time. He healed the sick and cast out demons. He was the only one to ever do this until this time. He was not a magician, because none of the magicians could replicate his miracles. He was the Son of God recorded in history. He was here. He died on the cross, rose again on the third day, and was seen by many people. He went to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to come into the hearts of all believers. Anyone who believes in Jesus as their Savior will be forgiven of their sins and receive salvation. Jesus is real. He wants to save you from the enemy and from your flesh that's trying to kill you and send you to hell for all eternity. To receive Jesus, you must believe that he is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins. You must accept his atonement for your sins. You must acknowledge that you are a sinner that needs a Savior. God is a holy God that will not allow anyone to get into heaven because of sin. He has judged sin through Jesus Christ's sacrificial death on the cross. However, for you to escape the wrath of God, you have to accept Jesus. God poured out his wrath on Jesus for sin on the cross. 
Jesus said to the Father in Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus felt the judgment of sin rest on him as he hung on the cross. He actually became our sin offering. There's no other way to be saved from hell and be judged by God except through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. If you acknowledge this as the truth, then you need to accept it as absolute truth. Whatever lies the devil has told you about Jesus or salvation needs to be broken. Salvation is a free gift that cannot be earned. You must accept it and not try to add on to it by believing any of the lies the devil has told you about salvation. Jesus alone is salvation. You must confess and repent from your sins by grace through faith. Grace means it cannot be earned, and it is only through faith and acceptance of Jesus and what he did on the cross. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, then you're at a crossroad. The Lord had you listen to this book to find out that God loves you and sent his son Jesus to die on the cross and forgive you of your sins. God wants you to accept his gift so your sins will be forgiven and you will have a right relationship with God restored. You will be forgiven and free. God loves you and sent his son Jesus to be your savior. He died for you and will forgive you of anything you have ever done in your life. Yes, anything, no matter what. This is an absolute truth. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is telling us he is the only way to be saved and have forgiveness of sins. God will accept you once you accept Jesus. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, then you will be saved and forgiven. You must repent of your sins and accept Jesus as your Savior. The devil has deceived you into thinking that you don't need Jesus. You can feel the tug of the Holy Spirit on your heart right now. This is proof that God is real. He is reaching out to you to help you to break the lies of the enemy to find him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're ready to accept Jesus as your Savior, then repeat this prayer with all your heart. God, I believe that I am a sinner. I need forgiveness. I cannot save myself. I accept the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Lord, please forgive me for all of my sins. I make you Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of my sin. Wipe my slate clean and help me to serve you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer for the first time, then the Holy Spirit has come into your heart and you're saved. You have a new relationship with God and you are forgiven. You have felt sin lift off of you and your heart become clean and renewed. You are born again, child of God. All of heaven is rejoicing with you as you have made Jesus the Lord of your life. The journey is just beginning, and God will show you his love and power as you walk closely with him all the days of your life. God will never leave you or forsake you. You do have an enemy, but the Lord Jesus has given you all the power you need to fight him and win. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Keep listening to this book for biblical wisdom that will help you become a disciple. You will also find out how to have a close relationship to the Lord while winning the fight against the enemy. Now, if you prayed this prayer and nothing happened, then one of two things occurred. 
First, you have prayed this prayer before, and you're already saved. Now, for the people reading this book, thinking that you're going to shortcut the process and just learn knowledge, it will not help you get saved. The second is that you didn't fully believe or think that you're ready to commit your life to Jesus. This is sad because you're not promised tomorrow. You may not ever get another chance to get saved. The death rate for humanity is 100%. You will die, but the devil wants to tell you that you're going to get a chance on your deathbed. However, very few people are awake on their deathbeds. They die instantly in their sleep or in a coma where they get unplugged later by a loved one. You are not promised tomorrow, and God has given you this chance. Today is the day of salvation. Choose this day whom you will serve. God is a gentleman, and he will not force his way into your life. He wants you to choose him. He gives you the freedom to choose. But the consequences are eternal death and hell if you make the wrong choice. He wants you to lay down your pride and plans for your life and choose him. God has the best plan in store for your life. And he is amazing. I lived a life full of sin before being saved. It appears to be fun, but leads to a life of guilt shame, and emptiness. Pray this prayer if you want to know God right now. If you pray this prayer with all of your heart, then Jesus will show you that he is real. Jesus said in Revelations chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. No matter what you've done, God will forgive you of your sins if you ask him. Pray this prayer and see how far down the rabbit hole goes. God, I have lived my life, and it's empty. I know that something is missing. I am a sinner, and I need forgiveness. I am sorry for my sin. I accept Jesus as my Savior. I am sorry for doubting you. I accept you today. Show yourself real to me. Come into my heart and forgive me of my sin. I repent of my sins and I make you Lord of my life. Save me and help me to serve you. I allow you full access to my life. I need you. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I want a real relationship with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have an enemy, and he has deceived us in many ways. This book will explore all the ways that you have entered into a contract with him during your life. This book is filled with the word of God because only it will set you free. The next chapter is the foundation for the devil's contract. Don't allow the enemy to stop you from listening to the rest of this book. God has brought you to this book, but you do not fully understand what the devil's contract is or how it's formed. You need to learn about all of the different areas of the devil's contract and especially how to break it. God will remind you to finish this book. God led you to this book, so keep listening and break the devil's contract over your life right now. Learn how to be free in Jesus and to have joy again. Restore the 